Here we have two identical shapes. They are exactly the same curves, but see what happens when I fill them with red. Interesting, isn't it? Most Affinity Designer users might know why this is happening, but probably Affinity Photo users might not know why this is happening. The reason for this is something called Fill Mode, which is available in Affinity Designer, but not in Affinity Photo. The Fill Mode determines what areas needs to be filled in, especially for complex shapes, where it is not clear what is inside and what is outside. Affinity supports two methods, the Alternate or the Winding method. The left star is in alternate mode. If we select the right star and look at its fill mode, we can see this is the winding mode. If I change it to alternate, we see it gets the same fill as the left star. Let me try to explain how these modes work so we can understand why they result in different fills. The easiest to explain is the alternate mode. Let me clear the fills and add a horizontal blue line to the left star which I need for the explanation. The way the alternate mode determines whether an area needs to be filled is by using a scan line or a ray coming from the outside, which is the blue line I just have drawn. Every crossing with a segment will switch the filling on and off. So we start outside of the object with the off state represented by zero, and once the scan line passes a line, it will be switched to on, represented by one, and the corresponding area will be filled. As the scan line continues, it will cross another segment, switching it off, so this area will not be filled, and the next area is going to be filled. So each time the scan line crosses a segment, it alternates between fill the area or skip the area, hence the name. This is why the middle area of the star is not filled in alternate mode. Let's move to the winding mode. It also uses the scan line, so let me extend the blue line. The determination of whether an area is going to be filled in in winding mode works similar, but this time the direction of the path the scan line crosses plays a role. If the cross segment has a clockwise direction, a value of 1 will be added to the scan line, and if the segment is in a counterclockwise direction, a value of 1 will be deducted. The rule for filling is that areas where the scan line has a value of 0 will not be filled. In this method, the direction of the path plays a big role. So let me show you the direction on how this star was drawn. It started from the bottom right to the top and then moved along the lines until it was at the bottom right again. Affinity allows you to show the direction of a curve. If we select the pen or note tool, there is an option called Show Orientation. This will show a red line at the last note. If we enable the outline view, using the keyboard shortcut command I, it becomes more clear. The orientation red line is now better visible and shows from which direction the line was ended. Let's turn off the outline view and show the direction of the line so we can see how the winding mode works. So the scan line starts with a zero from the outside. The first segment it crosses is clockwise, so the area will be marked as 1. It then crosses another clockwise line, which results in the area being marked as 2. And the last area is marked as 3, as the scan line also crossed a clockwise segment. Now that all the areas the scan line passed have a value, we can check these values and none of them is zero, resulting that all of them will be filled. The process is repeated with scan lines through all other areas, and the end result is that all the areas in the star will be filled. So now that we understand how things work, 
Let's look at some practical examples. Let me draw a rectangle in clockwise direction. So this means I go up, left, down and right. Now I will draw another rectangle, but this time counterclockwise. So right, up, left and then down. I'm going to select both shapes and merge them so they will become a single curve object. Let's fill it. And by default Affinity uses the alternate fill mode. And as you might have expected, the intersecting area of the two rectangles is not filled. Let's switch to winding fill mode and notice how nothing has changed. You might have expected that every area was going to be filled just like with the star example. Well, the reason is that the curve contains clockwise and counterclockwise segments. If I enable the outline view, and show the orientation, we can see that. Let's do a quick winding calculation and as you see, the middle section gets a value of zero, which is the reason why it doesn't get filled. As a rule of thumb, if you want to have the curve completely filled in winding mode, you have to make sure all the lines are in the same direction. There is an option in Affinity to change the direction of a curve section. It can be found in the context toolbar and is called reverse curves. If I select an ending note, by the way ending notes are shown in red, and press the reserve curves button, notice how the orientation changes. When we go back to normal view, we see that everything is filled. Awesome! I hope this makes sense. As a last example, I want to show you how you can use the winding fill in your advantage to create interesting results and how to fine tune your fills using the reverse curves option. So let's start by drawing a rectangle. I'm going to make a duplicate and rotate it 90 degrees. Let's merge them and change the fill mode to winding. Excellent! This fills the whole curve as both of the rectangles are in the same direction. I will select an ending node and reverse the direction. As we have seen earlier, we get the same result as alternate fill. Now I'm going to duplicate this curve and rotate by 45 degrees. Let's now merge them together and see what happens. An interesting result. Looks a bit strange initially, but if I rotate it, you get this interesting four star shape. I can duplicate and merge again. By adjusting the end nodes and the direction, I can change how the fill is being applied. I can either make it so that the whole curve is filled, or modify until we have something interesting. Let's do another copy, a rotation and a merge. Pretty interesting. And let me show you that this is different than the alternate fill. As I change the fill mode, see how there is a subtle difference. Pretty awesome. Before I leave you, I want to share that even though Affinity Photo shows the objects in the correct fill mode, there is no option to change the fill mode. At least I have not found it. If you do know it, please share in the comments. Thank you for watching and until the next video.